Hi there, booktubers. It's time once again for my weekly reading wrap-up video, and this is version two. I recorded version one earlier today, got it all edited and uploaded, and ended up having to take it down because of technical problems. So I am back once again to do it all for you one more time. Awesome. Um, so sorry about the wet hair and the weird lighting and all that stuff. So. Um, I'm not really sure exactly how many books I read last week, but, uh, yeah, I, I absolutely loved a few of them. In fact, two of them are now on my all-time favorite book list, and one I was not so fond of. First up, I wanted to mention a graphic novel that I read, which was called The Curse by Mike Norton, and unfortunately I don't have a cover to show you, but, uh, it's a really short compilation of three of his stories and uh, it's pretty much got everything you could ask for in a graphic novel. It's got action, humor, zombies, pirates, pirate dogs, um, and lot, lots and lots of blood and guts. Yeah, so if you, if you like graphic novels, I highly recommend it to you. Um, I gave it a very enthusiastic five-star rating. Next up, I read Cinder by Marissa Mayer. And um, if you don't know, this is sort of a dystopian, twisted version of Cinderella. And the lead character, Cinder, is a seemingly half-human, half-cyborg. And she lives in this place called New Beijing. And um, there's this plague that is just killing many, many people really quickly. And they're trying to find a cure. And one of the ways they're trying to find a cure is by doing experiments on sort of the lower class people in society and uh, Cinder's one of the people that they do experiments on. When I first read the description for this book I didn't really think it would be something that I would be interested in but so many people kept telling me how great it was and I kept reading really great reviews for it so I decided to give it a try and I am so happy that I did because let me tell you guys, I enjoyed the heck fire out of this book. <laughs> you know, it had just the right amount of action. And the world building, because it's like this really complicated world that uh, Marissa Meyer has, has created. And she did a really great job. My only complaint, one little tiny complaint, I have to wait until 2013 for the next book. It's January 2012. I have to wait until 2013. I'm not liking this at all. And it was another very big, very enthusiastic five-star rating from me. Um, okay, so next up, I read a couple books that I got for review, and they were both by the same person. It's a two-volume set, actually. It's an anthology set by um, K.W. McCabe called Dreams Both Real and Strange. Now... These were both really super short, and I ended up reading them back to back, like in one sitting. Um, I think that the first one was like maybe 70 pages, and it had five stories. So, um, if I have a complaint, it would be that the stories were so short that by the time I started to feel like I was connecting with the story and understand and understanding what was going on, she was moving on to the next one. Um, in the second volume, she actually it was a um, a continuation of the stories from the first volume, which was good because I was able to understand more and it wasn't as confusing. And uh, her writing style is, you know, very lyrical and there was definitely a sense of paranormal. It, it's definitely got a paranormal slant to all of the stories. And um, overall, I enjoyed it. Like I said, just it was a little confusing and I think it would have been much better if it had be just been combined into one volume, but um, I ended up, I think, giving it three and a half stars on Goodreads. Whatever, and I'm doing a lot of gestures with my hands today. I don't know why. <sighs> okay, I read Divergent by Veronica Roth. <laughs> For a long time, I felt like I was the only person in the world who had not read this book, and I had had it on my Kindle for quite a while, kept trying to start it, and never seemed to be in the mood to read it. Kind of how it was with the, the first Hunger Games book, but where with the Hunger Games, when I finally actually read that book, I actually ended up loving it. This book, yeah, not so much. Um, there were aspects that I liked. I liked the whole um, aspect of you know the different factions, and I liked some of the characters. 
but my main problem was that I just did not like the main character, Triss. Yeah, I, I just didn't like her. And uh, my other big problem was that, especially at the beginning of the book, the people and like the whole Dauntless faction came across as a bunch of bullies doing incredibly ridiculously dangerous things for no good reason. <laughs> I mean, I know you can argue like by the end it made more sense and blah blah blah, but just to me, I just, I don't know. It wasn't for me. What can I say? I think I ended up giving it two stars because like I said, there were a couple things that I liked, but yeah. Don't hate me for being honest, people, okay? <laughs> Alright, so I am going to move on to the two books that I mentioned at the beginning that I read this week that ended up making it to my favorite books of all time list. And the first one of those books would be Paper Towns by John Green. Okay, this book... It is about a boy named Quentin, or Q for short, who lives, who grows up living next to this girl named Margot Roth Spiegelman, and he's pretty much been in love with her his entire life. And when they were younger, they were really, really close friends, um, but as they grew up, they kind of drifted apart, but they were always still friendly. And this one day, she shows up in the middle of the night at his window, and she tells him that they're going to go on this big adventure, and they end up going out all night, um, doing this whole you know, carrying through with this whole plan of revenge that she's got planned down to the last detail. And when he gets home in the morning after this amazing night, um, he's feeling great and he thinks that maybe there's a possibility that he could finally have Margot in his life in some way. But little does he know that right after she leaves him in the morning, she disappears. And uh, she's done this before, so people aren't really panicking in the beginning. Um, but as time goes on, people are starting to wonder more and more, like, what happened to her and if she's coming back. And uh, Q pretty much becomes obsessed with trying to find out what happened to her and where she went. And he thinks that she's been leaving him clues for her, for him to find her. Um, clues that are just, like, for him only. So he becomes pretty much obsessed with finding her. There were many, many times when I wanted to grab... Q and just shake some sense into him and there were many times when I wanted to kick Margot Roth Spiegelman's ass but in the end I absolutely loved this book I can count on one hand how many times a book has made me cry this book made me cry um, I, the last three pages of this book were my complete undoing you guys one second I was perfectly fine reading this and the next I was sobbing like I said it was the last three pages and I got to the end of it and I put the book down mind you it's four o'clock in the morning because I've spent all night reading this thing and I walked away from it for like 20 minutes came back to put it back on my bookshelf looked at the cover started crying again Yeah. and in fact when I was doing the first version of this video when I was talking about it I started to get like all emotional again so it's probably a good thing that I took that video down because I looked like an ass. But yeah, this book is just... Uh, John Green is just an evil, evil man. He he somehow manages to create these characters that just come to life. And, and you want to know these characters and you want to be in their world. Just for your information, the very last line in this book is my favorite closing line of a book that I've ever read. Yes, it is just absolute perfection. <laughs> and to think, I have been purposely putting off reading The Fault in Our Stars because I knew it would be an extremely emotional book. So what happens? I read frickin' Paper Towns and I'm an emotional basket case by the end of this book. So I can't win. He is just, he is bound to determine he's going to make me an emotional puddle of goo every time I read one of his books. I, yes. In fact, when, if and when I ever meet him, I'm going to take this book and I'm going to smack him in the face with it. And then I'm going to give him a great big hug and say thank you for for creating these characters that I end up loving so much. And, um, yeah. So, I hate John Green, and then I, I love John Green and his brother Hank. I don't hate Hank. I, it's all love for Hank. 
yeah, whatever. I'm babbling. What the hell? Okay. Yeah, the other book that I ended up uh, absolutely loving this week is Poughkeepsie by Deborah Anastasia. This book was sort of uh, a book that came out of left field for me. I was looking for something to read that was completely different after reading Paper Towns. And uh, this book had been recommended to me by a few people. And the cover really caught my attention on Goodreads. So I decided to give it a try. And you guys know I'm not the hugest fan of contemporary romance, um, especially adult contemporary romance. But I am so glad that I gave this book a try. Oh, this book just gave me all kinds of warm, fuzzy feelings. And <laughs> it's about these two people named Livia and Blake, and they're both like 20 something. Blake is homeless, and he spends a lot of his time at the Poughkeepsie train station. And every day he sees Livia going back and forth to work, and she always acknowledges him, she always smiles at him. And he has this thing where he counts how many times she smiles at him. And it sounds incredibly cheesy, but in the context of the book, it is so adorable. And um, so one day, she ends up defending him as he's getting ready to be attacked by this group of teenagers. And they end up becoming friends. And of course, the, fr the friendship turns into a romance. And it is, simply put, one of the most beautiful, well-done love stories that I've ever read in my entire life and not just the characters of Livia and Blake who are perfect together but the entire cast of other characters that there are like Blake's um, foster brothers you've got Beckett and Cole who seemingly from the outside seem like complete polar opposites Beckett is this really hardcore criminal and Cole works at a church and is thinking of becoming a priest and then you've got Livia's family her, co her father is a cop and her sister is like really crazy and sort of out of control and it's just everything works on every single level. There was not a point in this book when I was reading it where it, I, it felt like it was slow, where I just wanted to put it down because I wasn't in the mood for it. It was just perfection on paper. Yes, I like how that sounds. It's perfection on paper. So if you like romances and you know, although you have to keep in mind this is an adult contemporary romance, there is some raciness going on, but nothing like overt, and there's a lot of cursing, but the cursing makes sense in the context of the book, so yeah, definitely give it a try, because it's just such a great book. I read it on my Kindle, and I actually just ordered the paperback version through Barnes & Noble and plan on rereading again. I somehow managed to make this video even longer than the one that I had to take down. What the hell? I thought I was trying to go through everything quickly, but whatever. Well, right now, I just started Perchance to Dream by Lisa Manchef, and this is the second book in the Theater Illuminata series, and um, I am 82 pages into it, absolutely loving it so far. Yeah. <laughs> I will probably read the third and, and final book in the series, which is called So Silver Bright next week as well. I'm really sorry that this video is so long. I've been trying my best, you guys, the last several videos that I've posted to try and keep the babbling to a minimum, but if you've made it this far, I really appreciate it. Um, I am so grateful to each and every one of you guys. I have almost 90 subscribers. When I started this channel, I was hoping that I would maybe have like 10 or 15, so I appreciate each and every one of you guys. So, yeah, and um, thanks. Thanks for listening to me babble and just being so welcoming to me. I appreciate it. And um, I will talk to you guys later. Happy reading, guys. And yes, don't forget to be awesome. See what I did there? Mm-hmm. <laughs>